Hello and welcome to Essex, specifically GridServe in Braintree. And today they've very kindly invited me down to drive some electric cars. And this is one of them, the MG4 in its trophy specification. So today I'm doing a road trip. We're going from here in Braintree, two hours up to Norwich at their new GridServe charging station. Along the way, I'll find out what the car's like. So let's get cracking. Finally got our hands on the MG4, isn't that great? And in person, it's actually quite a lot bigger than you think. It's a lot longer and wider and there's a lot of room inside but let's start at the front where it's very aggressive these these lights with these sort of led blades coming down all pointing towards the center and this massive mg badge it's sort of taking a note out of volkswagen's book really and then at the back because this is a trophy model you get this excellent spoiler which is body colored to match and this rather interesting light bar that goes across the top with some interesting patterns in it anyway if we open up the boot quickly we can see that there is 363 liters of space in here which is all right not class leading but pretty decent and it's a nice square shape and there's no load lip either let's go and see what the back seats are like okay so in the back of the mg4 and I've actually got a decent amount of space back here. If I sit all the way up straight, my head does touch, but no one sits like that. This seat is set up in my driving position and I have my knees behind it. That's absolutely fine. No bother at all, really. One thing I would mention is because this is an electric car, the floor's quite high because that's where all of the battery pack is. So that means that my feet are brushing slightly on the seat in front. I, I would prefer it if the seat was set a bit higher so that I could get my feet under, but other than that, it's fine. Again, materials in here, it's all, it's all black plastic, but at least they've done something with it to make it different textures and stuff like that. It, it, they've done what they can in, in a car that is ultimately built to a price. You've got two pockets on the back here, so you can put your phone in if you want to, and then I guess you could watch it. In terms of other practical things back here, you do have door pockets. They're not very big, but they're there. A USB-A there in the center, and there isn't actually any armrest. So it's a bit tricky if you're wanting to rest your home somewhere. Right, this is the cabin of the new MG4, and I have to say I'm very impressed with it. I'll talk more about it when we're driving, but Lots of cubby spaces down here. You've got cup holders. There's your wireless charging pad. Huge bin in the center here. And a little bit of elasticated thing there. I don't really know what that's for. I guess you could put the key in there if you wanted to. Big glove box. But yeah, the overall design is, is very nice. Very impressed with it. It's minimalist, but there's still a couple of shortcut buttons, so it's better than Volkswagen in that regard. Okay, so now we're out driving the MG4 in its trophy specification. And from where I'm sitting, it's very comfortable actually. These seats are quite nice. Got a little bit of bolstering on them, so they're a little bit sporty as it's an MG, but not so sporty that it's uncomfortable. This headrest is really soft. It's actually quite pillow-like. The only headrest that I felt that was as soft as this was in a Mercedes S-Class, and that's quite high praise. As I said, I'm on my way to Norwich. Never been there before, I don't think. But the MG4 will keep me company the whole way. This is a good little two-hour road trip to get to know the MG4 and find out what it's like to drive on different kinds of roads. We're going to be doing a bit of motorway, a bit of a road and potentially b road as well so we can see what it's like there this steering wheel is a bit odd it's not circular but it is at the same time it's it's, it's quite it's quite chunky not quite as chunky as a bmw steering wheel but still fairly chunky 
I don't want to say that it looks like the steering wheel from an Austin Allegro, but it does sort of look like the steering wheel from an Austin Allegro. That's sort of rounded off square. It's not quite like that, but it's in the image of that, shall we say. So let's talk a little bit more about the cabin because this is where you're going to be spending most of your time if you buy one of these. And it's very minimalist. It's sort of more similar to the ID3 in that regard where it's pretty much total lack of buttons but you do at least get some shortcuts along the bottom of the screen. Now unfortunately your climate controls are still all done through the screen and that's a bit of a fiddle. It's not ideal, I'd rather just have a rotary dial that I can change the temperature or the fan speed or whatever but I know that's how most modern cars are now and I've just got to accept it, but it won't stop me complaining. I do not like that. All MG4s come with a 10.25 inch touchscreen, which is what that is there, and it's very clear, seems to have all of the information in it that you need. You can hook your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto up to it as well. And then in front of me here, I have a smaller 7 inch screen but this is more square it's more like a tablet like an iPad and that's my driver's display which has important information like my speed my tire pressures my battery level and this is where all of the information for the MG pilot system lives as well so I can currently see that it can see the car in front of me and the car in front of that which is a van and it can also see the white lines and whatever but when I get onto some more dual carriageways then I will tell you if that system works because it's quite impressive that a car of this size and especially a car at this price point because after all this is currently the cheapest electric car on sale in the UK that it has something like this. It's not quite Tesla levels, but it's pretty good for this class of car. I'll be keeping an eye on the range as well because this journey is 78 miles. And when we set off, we had 170-ish miles. It was sort of flickering between that and 169. So let's see how that goes because in theory by the time we get to grid serve at Norwich we will in theory have around 90 miles of range but let's see if that actually comes to fruition so below that screen because this is the top spec trophy model I've got a wireless charging pad if you go for the SE or the SE long range you don't get that so if you want a wireless charger you're going to have to go for the trophy and then sort of pushing out on this platform in the middle here is your drive selector so it's on a dial so drive neutral reverse as you would expect and push it for park and then your electronic handbrake but that really is it there isn't anything else it's just put it into whatever direction you want to go and it's ready to go so a few other things that I get in the trophy that you don't get in the SE spec cars. I have a heated steering wheel, heated front seats, I've got a 360 degree camera and I've got inbuilt sat nav which I'm currently using. Obviously if you've got the SE cars you just took up your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto anyway so it doesn't really matter, it's only if you want to have the inbuilt system which works quite well but I don't know why you would need sat nav these days everyone just plugs their phone in so in terms of the materials in here this is Jasper's forte uh, I've got some nice padding on my armrest down here again some nice padding on top of the center armrest here on the tops of the doors it is hard plastic but it's not a cheap feeling hard plastic it's it's got a different sort of pattern in it so it's actually quite tactile um, yeah it's interesting obviously you probably wouldn't be resting your arm that high up anyway 
on the top of the dash it's a squidgy material so that's good and then generally it's just black or grey it's piano black which is good and then they've got these sort of grey plastic accents which I guess are supposed to look like metal but they don't really but it is cheap compared to its rivals and I don't really think that this is any worse material quality wise than the ID3 that we went in not that long ago everything feels well screwed together you can't move the centre console about nothing's rattling or shaking I'm quite impressed actually so ride and handling ride wise I would say that it's very comfortable it's not massively sporty but it is rear wheel drive much like its competitors the ID3 and Cooper Vaughan that seems to be the optimal setup for small electric cars anyway and yeah it, it does actually feel slightly rear biased the steering's nicely weighted it's a little vague on center but then it weights up as you pick up speed and the the overall ride quality is it's very well damped it doesn't seem to crash when you go over potholes it doesn't like reverberate around the cabin and make a huge noise now you can get the mg4 in quite a good selection of colors unfortunately no green as of yet but you can get it's, they've got some fantastic names for them some of the themes seems to be around places in London so you can get Camden Grey or Holborn I don't know how you say that Holborn Holborn it's on the tube line I know that I've been past it a bazillion times but I never know how to say it that's blue apparently uh, this is orange um, but they haven't called it after a place in London or near London they've called it volcano orange so a little bit of a diversion from that theme but I guess if they were going to name it after something being in Essex would be the appropriate place for it other colors include dynamic red and I bet you'll never guess what they've called black I'll give you three seconds to guess they've called it black everything else has got a name but black is just black so yeah so now I'm on the A12 which isn't a motorway but is a busy A road so I have set the MG Pilot up uh, to hook onto the car in front which comes as part of the MG Pilot is the adaptive cruise control so it's hooked onto the back of the Mini in front of me and I've got it set so it can only go 70 miles an hour and then it just does the driving for you obviously I still have to steer this isn't one of those really sophisticated systems where it can do all of that for you but that isn't the only thing that you get with MG Pilot you also get autonomous emergency braking you get lane keep assist blind spot monitoring rear cross traffic alert all of those things that you want because they keep you safe this car has and that's standard on the MG4 range it's not just something you get on the trophy so that's really quite good to see shall we talk about acoustics yes so uh, this is an electric car therefore it is very quiet when you're driving along the problem with electric cars is, is because there's no engine noise you then tend to pick up on other noises but I have to say I'm very impressed by the lack of wheel tyre roar there isn't really that much noise coming through at all from the tyres and the wind noise isn't too bad but when you're on a motorway you can just sort of hear it just there rustling past the wing mirrors but it's not majorly intrusive or indeed any worse than other cars it's just because you pick up on these things if you're in a electric car so let's talk about 
back trees and range and all of that stuff that's important when you're buying an electric car. So you can get two different kinds of battery in the MG4. They are a 51 kilowatt hour battery that's only available in the cheapest SE trim and that'll give you a range of 218 miles and you'll be able to charge it from a wall charger in about seven and a half hours so not too bad if you want to fast charge it of course you can do so uh, but that will take around 35 to 40 minutes so sort of in the same ballpark as other players in this field if you go for the long range you then get a bigger battery 64 kilowatts and that has a range of 281 miles and that's the biggest range you can get on an mg4 because if you go for the trophy you get things like bigger wheels that spoiler on the back a few extra toys so it's slightly heavier and that means that the range on the trophy drops to 270-ish miles so it's only about 10 or 11 less than what's quoted for the long range. Power wise you get 170 PS in the base trims and 250 newton meters of torque. Now that torque level carries across to the bigger battery cars but you do get over 200 just over 200 ps in this trophy model which would then put it on par with the id3 cupra born those sort of things and 0 60 is seven and a half seconds for the lower trims and actually 7.7 seconds for this trophy trim because although it's got slightly more power it weighs slightly more so it balances itself out. So basically you're going to be doing 0 60 in just around the 7.5, 7.7 mark, regardless of which spec you go for. And the top speed for all cars is 100 miles an hour, but that doesn't, it's not really relevant anymore, is it? The main benefit of choosing an MG4 over any of its rivals is, of course, the price. So prices for the SE start at just under 27,500. If you go for the long range, it's just under 29,500. And if you go for this top spec trophy, it's just under 32,500. So even in its top spec, it's still a good 5,000 pounds cheaper than the cheapest ID3, which is crazy. It's that's not an insignificant amount of cash, £5,000. So you're going to have similar power figures, as we've said. You've got as nice an interior, and it's still got the stupid buttonless infotainment system, although this one doesn't seem to crash as much as the Volkswagen's uh, system. So that's a, another bonus. I think, personally, that this car looks better than the ID3. And if I was in the market for an electric hatchback, I would be very seriously considering why would I be spending £5,000 more to get a car that, in my opinion, isn't really as good. Now, shall we talk about the elephant in the room? Because MG's before they went off sale in 2005 weren't exactly known for their reliability and then when they came back to the market in Europe a few years ago now it was like oh well we're going to do the thing that the Korean brands did and we're going to put a seven year warranty on our cars and indeed this MG4 has a seven year warranty on it however if you are familiar with online forums you may have seen some talk of the MG4 having a little bit of an oil leak. Now this is amusing because only MG could build an electric car that leaks oil. Um, as I'm sure you're aware there aren't really any moving parts in an electric car it's just motor and you 
spin it one way or the other. But yeah, there have been a few stories. It doesn't seem to be an insignificant amount of people who've taken delivery of an MG4 have experienced some oil on their driveway and they're not very happy about it. But MG seem to be fixing it, so that's good. But it does put a little bit of a dampener on what was quite an exciting car launch really it was like oh wow this is the cheapest car and it seems as good as every other car that's on sale that costs a bunch more than it and now it's got this little shadow over it of the oil leak but hopefully future cars will be fixed now because they know it's an issue so going forward it shouldn't carry on fingers crossed but it is just something to be wary of Anyway, that's enough of me chattering on. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my road trip in the MG4 and I shall see you at GridServe in Norwich where I will do a bit of a conclusion for you. Okay then, so the MG4. Well, I'm actually extremely impressed with it and for those wondering, I only actually used 40 miles of range on my nearly 80 mile journey. So I think the person who was driving this previously might have had a heavy right foot because it, it was doing an exceptional job and was very efficient. In terms of its rivals, I would probably pick one over the ID3 because I've driven that and I prefer how this looks. But I haven't driven the Cupra Born yet and I've heard a lot of people say that that drives a lot better than the ID3. So we'll have to give that a go at some point later this year. Anyway, if you've enjoyed, thank you very much for watching. Please give it a like, comment down below if you've got something to say, but most importantly, please do subscribe to the channel, it really helps us out. If you want to support the channel, you can do so in one of three ways, that is Patreon, memberships right here on YouTube, or you can buy some merch which I'm sporting here. Anyway, thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.